in calculus 3, we find it very difficult to imagine the equations of surfaces and what they would look like in three dimension space because our mind really isn't trained to do that. Now some people pick it up real quickly but not everybody. So since we have fantastic technology out there what I've done is I've scoured the internet and I found a free 3D grapher that is very very good and uh, if you can use this in doing your homework or use it whenever you're in class and need a picture this is a great place to go. If you're in my class, you can find it at on my webpage. See Calc 1, Calc 2, and then Links and Wolfram Alpha. Click on that one, and you'll go down to Links, 3D Grapher, Monroe Community College. Now, if you're not in my class, I'll put the link down underneath this video. So you click on it. Now, this is a JavaScript, so some computers may balk at it. Make sure you enable Java. You have the most current version of Java as well. So how this works is, there's lots of different things you can do, but they have function 1, function 2, function 3 already put in there. They have, if you click on the arrows, they have a whole bunch of different kinds of functions in there you can try. The ones that are listed right now, function 1 through function 4, are basic, really nice functions to look at. But if you want to play around and you have a minute or two, you can click on different ones. To, you can move this around by clicking and holding and just turning it you can see that the axes are labeled Let me go back a little bit x-axis, y-axis, z-axis oriented properly this is a really fun function it's a good one for optimization which we will do later so let me show you a few things uh, let's not this let's not work with this function though let's work with a uh, function four down here typical paraboloid it gives us a lot of good ways of learning stuff because it's simple Let's talk about these buttons really quick. This button right here will reload if you've really messed up the window, which happens. This will help you reload it. This one clears it. And I can click on function 4 down here and hit graph, and it will graph it. Now you can see how um, it extends above here. And yes, I can make the window bigger, but not if I want it to be on the video screen. So I'm going to show you how to change the window so it'll fit inside here better. So I go to View Settings, I go to Format Axes. And you can see it looks like just a calculator menu, except for you have this extra column here, Z Min, Z Max, and Z Clip. Now notice how Z Clip is just slightly bigger than Z. And I'm not sure why they do that, but I always make it equal to whatever my Z Min and Z Max is. It seems to produce better pictures. All right, so I'm going to try uh, minus 5 to 5 minus 5 to 5 and then because I know this is a paraboloid and you can see right here that it's always everything's going to be above the xy plane I'm going to have that z min is 0 and my z max also at 5 and I'm going to make my clips the same so 0 and 5 apply changes and you can see you have a much better looking picture that you can manipulate Click on the X in the corner, and you can see you move it around. It's kind of jerky moving it around, and I have a very sensitive mouse too, which I'm sure you all do too. Uh, so just get, you know, you just have to get used to it. Now some of the things that we do in Calc 3 is we take a look at cross sections and contours. Cross sections occur when you slice our graph vertically, and contours occur when you slice your surface horizontally. So I'm going to come up to View Settings and go down to View YZ Plane from Above. So they, they don't really mean from above. They mean from the side, but that's from above is sufficient. So you can see there's the Y axis. The Z axis is always vertical, and you can see the side. Now, if you were to slice this paraboloid in each of those sections, you would get a nice parabola. So the cross section is a parabola. And where it's positioned vertically will change whether, but its shape does not. So let's go to view settings and go to XZ plane. You can see now that that has changed to an X. And you have a nice, this is a very symmetri symmetrical shape. So that's why they look the same from all sides. However, if you look from the top XY plane from above, you'll see the circle, which makes sense, right? If I turn this, and I look straight down the z-axis, which again is hard to do without that. Yeah, there you go. You get your circle. 
So that's something to remember how to look at the different settings. Now, it, I can animate it like that if I do click on the mouse in the funny way, but I'm not sure exactly what I'm doing to make it do that. All right. Now you're probably wondering about these glasses right here. We actually have a set of 3D glasses in our department, but if you have a pair of red and blue 3D glasses, you can click on this and it will add 3D uh, effects on it. You put the glasses on and it will actually look 3D. It's actually incredibly fun to mess around with that. Well, let's keep going. I think, let's see, we talked to the window. We talked about the different looks and the different sides. Now what we're doing very soon is contours. So let's go up to contour plot and take a look at it. So we want to draw the contour plot of the surface that I already have on there. So draw a contour plot. So they're going to do the first level at minus one, which doesn't make sense because I know there isn't one down there. Let's do a step size of bigger than 0.2. Let's just do um, one. Number of contours, let's do six. And uh, Or you can enter a list. There they are. And I, you can see how they're a step size if you would like but let's not do that. Let's do OK and let's see what it looks like. Now I'm not sure what happened there so let's try again. Draw contour plot, first level, step size, number of contours. Oh, I gotta change this right here. I did have it on function one, I need to go to function four. Click OK. Well, that was, that was really weird. <laughs> Alright, anyway, there you have your contours and you have to imagine that when I take my paraboloid and I cut it when z equals 1, it's going to have this shape. And when I cut it horizontally at z equal 2, it's going to have this shape, etc. And you can see this is a circle of radius 1, this is a circle of radius square root of 2, this is a circle of radius square root of 3, etc. Square root of 4, etc. And you can see how the contours are getting closer together and that means something specific that we'll learn in class. Now what's really nice to help with your visualization, this says click on the contour plot to view the contours in 3D. And they mean click on this window. Watch what happens. This is pretty spectacular. So to stop the animation, just click once. But you can see the contours separated by a single digit Z value, so 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and how they lie on the surface. So in the corner down here, you can still see them in the 2D plane like a topographical map, but here you can see them in the 3D plane to put the two together. That's very, very nice uh, type of thing to deal with. Okay, so right now I'm going to stop this video. You can mess around with anything else up here, but as we move through the semester, I'll teach you how to do different things that we're doing in class to uh, help you visualize things and help you use this program the, to the best of your ability.